Suron Cyberbike. Completely different bikes, completely different price range. Up until you start chasing more power. I have nothing personal against Surons. I think they are amazing bikes. The reason why this video even exists is because this is the most common question for my audience. So how would you compare Suron versus Cyberbike? Here's the deal. If you're buying the stock Suron, it's great. It's a different category that doesn't compete our Cyberbike. If you're planning from the beginning that you want to have this highly powered machine, that gets a little bit sensitive and I honestly can't recommend Suron anymore because for that price, I think you get so much more with this beast. So here's the benefit and privilege of US citizens and North America in general has this amazing Suron bike for 3,600 US dollars. That's absolutely amazing. But it's completely different situation for us in Europe. Price is much higher bike is not even available and we want to be comparing powerful Suron. That means if you buy the stock version and you start spending money for modifications like better controller, bigger and stronger battery, right away you need better brakes, better suspension. Then we compare this highly modified 13 kilowatt Suron with a Cyberbike. Now we go to the price range where you spend probably close to 7000 euro on your Suron. What you're getting, that's a little bit tricky because you're still having this toy-like bike that has a great power for sure, but it's still a small bike. You still have a pretty small battery. You have a slow charger. And that to me is a little bit crazy because we're comparing to the cyber bike that is from the scratch, built for power, built for convenience, and it's some serious man power. Right from the beginning, we incorporated three kilowatt built-in charger. You just open the door, plug it in, and it charges in one hour. That's so convenient because you can just start charging anywhere, anytime, just when you have opportunity. It's something different, always dragging the charger, and you need to always plan your rides a little bit more because charging takes forever. I did a separate video about price of these modifications when I did my research, when I'm part in all of these Facebook groups and I asked and I quoted and I checked what people upgrade most commonly. So as you get more power, you need better brakes, you want to replace this stock front fork and it builds up. You know what you end up with? With a lot of parts that were not meant and not built for this amount of power. So you need to be upgrading a lot of stock parts because they break. That's the difference that when you are looking at these YouTube videos with highly modified surrounds and with a lot of power, don't expect you're getting the same thing from the stock Suron. And if you're already planning that you'll be slowly building up and you'll be slowly upgrading your Suron, you should think twice because you can get this beast for the same price. This monster rides with 27 kilowatt peak power. That is incredible torque. That is some serious power. Now on these latest models, we're delivering the Cyberbike with a stock motorcycle front fork with a proper heavy duty motorcycle brakes. The biggest argument is always Suron is street legal. Let's put it straight, it's not. You can buy a street legal version that has the ridiculous low speed and that uh, it's delivered with five minute modification, essentially cutting and wiring a wire that makes it full power Suron. But this is not supposed to be on a street anymore with this power. So you're essentially pretending you have low power Suron. Lightweight, agile, quick. Uh, so it does like 47 miles an hour, which is pretty decent off-road, pretty tasty. Uh, the road legal one is restricted um, as standard. So you only get in at 30 miles an hour. It's only a hack. It's not official street legal Suron. If you want to have your Suron officially registered with full power, that varies in every country. It's a little bit different, but people do it and it's the same principle like with these cyber bikes. You essentially need to pass certain technical inspection that is in your country. They check everything, then you can be getting license plates. I'm six foot two, my friend is six foot, uh, six foot four, and Suron is just not an option for us. It's way too small. But on these bikes, it's, it's pretty, 
good aspect ratio when you look at us on these bikes. And most importantly, we're not hunched over, which is the main most important comfort thing on these bikes. Truon has really cool design, really well done frame, swing arm, and it's beautiful bike for jumps, for trails, and for some crazy off-roading because it's a lightweight motorcycle. Cyberbike is a it's a, it's completely different purpose. This is not for jumping. It's a heavier bike. It's 86 kilos. That's not for the same thing. It looks different. I have to be honest. It took me some time to get used to this industrial design, but I just can't get over it now. Now because we're doing a small production of these bikes and we have all these uh, 3D printed panels. Now it gets to the point where I can be really creative with colors and create this every single bike that is a perfect combination of science and art. Definitely stay tuned to this channel. I'm gonna show you all these upgrades on the latest cyber bikes with these brakes and a front fork. It's absolute killer. And especially this blue slash gray and black color version if you, by the way, are in the Czech Republic or somewhere nearby Olomouc in Czech and you have a Suron, please contact me, get in touch and we can record really cool comparison video. That would be a really cool deep dive in these two machines together. Every Sunday we do e-bike content and every Wednesday we do van life content. So click the notification bell to stay informed and stay tuned for the follow-up videos. Ciao!